Joining us now is Ronan Lee, a doctoral prize fellow at Loughborough University, London. Good to have you, Ronan. And this is a very grim milestone. Well, well, it's another shockingly depressing and grim day in Myanmar. I think the people of Myanmar will not be surprised by how brutal the military has behaved towards four prisoners. I mean, let's let's call this what it is. I mean, the military has described this as executions of terrorists. In reality, it was the murder of four people uh, denied a free trial by Myanmar's military. Uh, that they were, it was because of a political decision made by the military junta. They decided to target these four individuals, but they've also sent sent a very strong message to the families and friends and loved ones of the fifteen thousand other political prisoners that are in the military's clutches today within Myanmar. That that they that, that those prisoners might. Suffer the same fate as these as these four. I mean, this is part of a military tactic to um, to terrorise the community and to uh, quell opposition, and it's designed to do that. There's nothing more to this than a a brutal terrorising of a civilian population by a military junta that the people simply don't want in power. And Ronan, give us your sense of the status of the opposition today. And in your view, is this, as some have described it, already a civil war? Well, it is a civil war. I mean, we, we've got a, a military uh, junta in power, and it's opposed by virtually every other group within the country. Uh, the public service has has ceased to function. The economy is is destroyed within Myanmar. Uh, the United Nations estimates that that approximately one third of the country will be will be facing food insecurity by the end of this year. I mean, that's a euphemism for for approaching starvation. And the civilian population, the opposition to the military junta have decided to to take up arms. They're, they're fighting the junta and they're having some success. I mean, they've been joined as well by uh, armed ethnic groups within Myanmar, which have been which have been fighting the central authorities and the military of that country since the 1940s. Uh, this is very much a civil war. It's, it's an ongoing war. And it's a war that will continue until the military is removed from power. And it's, I think, important to note that the military has given no indication that it's ever prepared to negotiate. They've taken no steps that indicate that they would be interested or prepared or willing to negotiate their exit from, from political control. And that means, because the people don't want them, that the war will continue till the military is removed or the military has, has simply murdered uh, an, enough members of the civilian community to stop opposition. But I don't, I don't see the people giving up any day soon. Yeah, and how do you see international reaction uh, changing now that the military has started executing people, especially among those in the region who have still wanted to have some outreach and, you know, try to get the junta on board for some kind of transition? Well, well, the, the international, so the Western community has left this in the hands of the, the regional body, uh, the Association of Southeast Asian N Nations, ASEAN. And ASEAN's been uh, not able to achieve anything, really. I mean, last week, an ASEAN representative was in Myanmar and described some progress with the junta. Right. This week, the, ju the junta's murdering its prisoners in, in, in jail. I mean, there's been no progress. I mean, what, what we need to see from the West is, is better involvement from the international community. It can't be left in the hands of the regional body because the regional body is divided and not, not willing or able to impact or, or uh, change the view of the Myanmar military. There's a couple of things we need to see, I think, quite urgently, which first, of course, would be an, an international arms embargo. I mean, it, it beggars belief that, that, that a military that, that is... Uh, treating civilians in its country as this one is can continue to buy bullets and guns to turn on civilians. Right. And that's something that's in the hands of the UN Security Council and they, they need to do their job. Yeah, and that's what key members of the opposition have been calling for and begging for for more than a year now. Ronan Lee, always great to talk to you.